Hello, everyone. Thank you for checking out this uh, video recording on uh, using Camtasia. My name is Han Wen Dong. I'm the instructional technology librarian here at the University of Idaho Library. And today we'll be talking about how to use Camtasia to create uh, instructional videos. And uh, let me share my screen and uh, turn off my camera. If you haven't downloaded Camtasia already, you can follow the steps on this page to install Camtasia, depending on whether you have a PC or a Mac machine. Once you have Camtasia downloaded, you can simply open the program. If this is the first time that you open the program, this is the screen that you'll see. Well, you can choose to start a new project, create a new project from a template, create a new recording, which can be used to create a screencast tutorial, or you can choose to open a new project. Uh, if you have uh, recently worked on any project, they will show up under this list here. For now, let's start a, a new project. This is the uh, Contagious screen that you'll see. This is the canvas where we can preview our media. Uh, the timeline is where we'll be doing our editing work. On the uh, top left is the tools panel. We can choose to add additional media and effects. And the media bin is where we import any existing media. The first topic I have is to edit existing lecture recordings that were recorded using Zoom or Teams. So I can simply choose to click the import media button or click the plus icon or you can also choose to drag and drop any media that you have and into the media bin. This is a uh, class recording from last year. I attended the class with Professor Howerton, who gave me the permission to use this clip as a demo. First, let's talk about how to perform a cut. If there are sections that you want to remove, for instance, if at the beginning you want to trim, like when you are doing rolls, uh, you can trim any sections that you don't want. So there are different ways to perform a trim or a cut. One way is just to drag one end of the clip towards the middle. And uh, I can do the same thing towards the other end. But this uh, clip is very long, so you can choose to zoom in or zoom out using the plus or minus, or you can also choose to click the magnifying glass and then the entire clip will fit on the timeline. Towards the end, the professor is talking about the homework assignment for the next week. I can simply just choose to delete that portion if I want to save this clip for long-term use for a future class. So those sections I don't need. Now I can drag this all the way to the very beginning to fill any gaps. If you want to remove like a section somewhere in the middle, you can choose to create the input and output point. And uh, this is the playhead, shows you the exact frame that you are looking at here on the canvas. If this portion is what I want to remove, I can choose to press delete on my keyboard, which will create a gap. And uh, you can choose to fill this gap with other media, or you can simply just drag this and then to join them together. Or you can also choose to perform a cut by clicking uh, the scissors icon. And when you do that, I will cut this portion and the program will stitch uh, these two clips together. So now this is going to be one clip. And uh, I can choose to add images from this existing clip that we imported and then to add somewhere to the recording. And to do that, I just first of all need to find a frame that I want to export. So let's go find here with the dog. I think I like that picture. And so I can choose to click this uh, camera icon to export this frame as an image. And uh, it will also show up under the uh, media bin as well. And so let's change the duration of this to, let's see. First of all, let's uh, put it at the very beginning. That's where we want this to be. And uh, I'm going to zoom in on my timeline. And uh, let's change this to, how about two seconds? So right here. And I can choose to put this over here. 
This will be a very intro image for this uh, class recording. And I can choose to add additional text. We can go to annotations and I can choose to add another text here. Change this to class recording for Jam 267. Under properties on the right hand panel here, we can change the properties of this uh, text field. We can change the font, we can change the size. This color might be a little too bright. So let's change the opacity. The outline, change that to zero as well. And then now we cannot see the, uh, the text. So let's change the text color to white. And let's change the size. Okay, so now it's pretty good. Uh, the background might be a little bit too busy. What we could do is to, let's uh, zoom in and uh, let's uh, change the opacity to 36%. Now I think that is, it's a lot more readable. Then let's uh, change the duration of this uh, text to be the to be matching the one with the uh, image that we embedded at the very beginning. And so now if we play this. If you do, you're just. Okay, so now it's pretty good. We can also add transitions to make sure that the transition from one media to another media is smooth. And the one common transitions that we can apply is the fade. And so I can choose to add it to the beginning at the end, or I can choose to add it to both. So let, uh, let's add it to both to see how it looks. And uh, let's preview this. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Overall, yeah, just make sure that when you apply a cut, just to be precise by navigating to that specific time frame that you want to cut and uh, by dragging the uh, playhead, to the specific locations. And sometimes you want to apply a noise reduction. And uh, I'm going to get rid of this clip for now. So here's another recording that applied some noise to it. So the recording that we had earlier was the audio level was really good. Let's take a listen to this one. But uh, yeah, I'm just I'm gonna try and like blitz through some of the comments. So there are some computer fan noise in the back. Let's apply a noise reduction. If we go to audio effects and drag this noise reduction, noise removal to the clip, and uh, let's give it a listen. So we see that there is the effect added, and we can also choose to change the effect under the properties on the right hand side. Let's give this a listen first. Common tools and how to start a new project in Premiere. So, uh, if you want and this is a lot better. So, if we toggle it off, and that was the clip prior to the noise reduction. You want to follow along? I suggest opening Premiere. It may take a. So yeah, there is some difference to it. So and then you can also choose to change the sensitivity, the amount of the reduction that you want to uh, apply. This will be a good way to get rid of any noise that your recording uh, picked up. And uh, sometimes your recording might be, the audio level might be a little off. It could be a little loud, could be too soft. And you can choose to click this bar to toggle the audio meter under properties. Tube, so launch that while I run through roll. Okay, so it looks like uh, it'll peak between like minus six and minus 12, which was pretty good. If we go back to the beginning, if we drag this over on top to increase the level and then play it. So recording this, so you all. If you ever see that there's a red bar at the very, at the very top, that means that the audio is peaked. You don't want that to happen. And uh, sometimes the audio might be too low and you want to raise it up. If it's too high, you want to bring it down. 
and you can simply choose to go to the properties and then change the gain to lower or higher depending on your need. So those are the common effects that you want to apply to edit your existing lecture recordings. Next, let's talk about how to use Camtasia add-in to record PowerPoint slides. And so if we have a PowerPoint already uh, open it up, the first time you install Camtasia, there should be an add-in for Camtasia uh, automatically installed. Here are the buttons that you can choose to toggle on, on and off. So here's to start the recording, to toggle on your audio, and uh, to record your camera. So those are the common ones that you need to use. To record, uh, let's hit the record button. At the very bottom right, you'll see that it is picking up the audio from your uh, microphone. And uh, let's just hit record to begin recording. This will be a good way to provide the narrations for your presentation slides. And uh, you can simply choose to uh, navigate to the next slide or the previous slide. And once you finish recording, if you are at the very end of the uh, uh, PowerPoint, and so it's going to give you the option to either stop recording or continue recording. So you can choose to continue record if you want to go back to any previous slide, or we can just choose to stop. And once we stop, it's going to ask us to save this uh, recording. Let's hit save. And uh, if you don't need to do any additional editing with this recording, you can simply choose produce your recording. But for now, let's choose to edit your recording because we want to take a look at what additional editing effects that we can apply to. Let's go back and uh, there should be a screen on the screen recording. This is the recording that we just uh, produced. So this is the recording that we produced. Every time we see there are like blue markers, uh, those are the markers generated by Camtasia to tell you that you advanced to a new slide. If we navigate on the here from quizzes to markers, the markers also are automatically generated based on each title for a new slide that you have previously indicated. And uh, we can choose to simply uh, rename this or you can choose to delete it. And uh, this can be very helpful to tell you where you advance to a new slide. Also, when you export this video to a YouTube video, that can be very helpful as you can choose to toggle on the option to create table of contents from markers, just like the video that you are seeing for this uh, recording, as those can be used as chapters and table of contents for your final video. And uh, we are also seeing two different uh, clips on two separate tracks. The very first track is going to be captured based on your camera. And then the second one is based on your PowerPoint slide. So the very first one can be very handy if you want to resize your camera or if you want to change the position of it. One useful feature I think will be very helpful is to create a, a custom mat, which is like a circled talking head effect. And as we see that my office is a little busy, I have a lot of things in the background, which can be very distracting. What we can do is to create a circled head just to show my face only. And to do that, first we need to go to annotations and then under shapes, let's first draw a circle. I'm gonna drag this somewhere here on a new track. And uh, this is going to be an oval. So let's uh, change it to a circle and then just put it over my head. And then I want to remove the outline completely. So I will just change the opacity to zero. Then let's uh, extend this to be the same length as our clip. Okay, the next step that we need to follow is to navigate to visual effects. And then we want to choose the media mat. And so everything in this shirt, in this circle will be shown and then remove everything else. And so if we apply this to our circle clip only, and so now we are only seeing my face. 
And so I can choose to drag this down over a little bit or I can choose to resize it. I can also choose to select both of those uh, clips and then right click to group them together into a single clip. And so now I can choose to uh, move this somewhere else. I can choose to uh, resize this. I can do that as well. And uh, this will be a good way to, so depending on the slide that you are showing, so sometimes you might want to position this to a different, say here I'm like blocking some words here. I can choose to resize this. I can choose to put this over here. So I can do that as well. The Camtasia add-in to record PowerPoint slide can be uh, very handy. Now let's talk about using the recording function to create a screencast tutorial video. I'm going to get rid of everything here and then start a new project. To record, click the uh, record button on the top left corner. So here are a couple options that we can choose from. You can choose this the screen. So if you have multiple screens, you can choose the one that you want to focus on. You can choose a specific region or whether you want it to be 1080p or 720. And then I can choose to toggle on my camera. And if you have multiple cameras, this is where you uh, choose the correct one. And then same with the microphone. If you have multiple microphones, choose the one that you want to choose. And uh, system audio can be helpful if you want to record the system audio, if you are playing music or sound uh, from a specific program, such as uh, if you are playing like a YouTube video using a, a web browser. And uh, I'm just going to hit start. So for this video, I want to demo how to use the Camtasia add-in function. So I'm just going to hit record start. And uh, let's go to home to start from the beginning. One of the functions of Camtasia is a Camtasia add-in for PowerPoint, which allows you to record PowerPoint presentation with Camtasia. And to use the add-in, first open up PowerPoint and then click the add-in tab. And then you can choose to click the microphone icon to turn on your microphone. You can choose to click this little icon to record your camera. You can start the recording by hitting the red record button. Okay, well, let's stop this recording. Let's talk about some features that we can use to gather audience attention. One of the things that we can do is to use the scale up. Since I'm talking about the features of the add-in, which I was only showing this portion of the screen. And so this can be very difficult to see. What I can do is to go to animations and choose scale. So I can choose to drag this to change the size of it. Um, so if I if I move this off the canvas, I resize this so that only the top corner is shown, then uh, so that will be a lot easier for people to see. And this little arrow tells us the duration of this animation. So if we zoom in a little bit and start from here, turn on your... So that could be, uh, that might be a little bit too quick or might be a little bit too fast. And uh, so you can simply choose to change that. So if I want to change this over here, uh, another thing we can do is to change the size of the cursor since that's, the, since that's what we want to highlight. And uh, let me change this over here as well. And uh, if we go back to properties on the right-hand side and go to cursor property, uh, we can choose to change the scale and change the cursor so that now it is a lot more visible. And so if we go back, turn on your microphone. And so now everyone can see where the cursor is. Another way to highlight is to use the sketch motion callouts under annotations. So if you go to annotations, 
under the curly here, we can choose a bunch of different sketch motions. So we can choose to add arrows, choose to draw a square or a circle. And so let's use the arrow for now. If I want to put this here and uh, highlight that this is the icon that you can choose to click to toggle on and off your camera. And uh, let's go to that specific audio portion to make sure that it matches. Uh, you can choose to uh, click this little icon to record your camera. So let's put it right by the camera. So which cool. is, uh, click this little icon. Okay. So I'm going to put it over here. If you move your mouse to one of the two circles in the middle, that changes to green color. You can choose to use that to rotate. And uh, I'm going to also resize this because it is a little bit too big. And so let's see how it looks. I'll click this little icon to record your camera. Yeah, that looks pretty okay, even though it might be a little bit too redundant with my oversized cursor. Uh, you can also choose to add like a square to highlight that as well. Under annotations, we can also choose to use a blur effect. So which will be this little droplet icon. If we add blur to something, that portion uh, that we choose to cover will be very blurry. So this may not be very useful, but under properties here, we can choose to use the invert function. So now only that portion is not blurred and everything else will be blurred. So we can choose to highlight the area, uh, then put this here, and then match this to the uh, sketch motion to see how it looks. So, uh, click this little icon to record. Looks pretty okay, but it might be a little too abrupt. And so we can choose to smooth out that uh, blurry effect by going into transitions and then just add a simple fade to the beginning and the end. And let's see how it looks. I'll click this little icon to record your camera. Okay, that looks a lot better. So that is blurred. Uh, we can also choose to use a spotlight as well uh, under annotations. Spotlight is this one. So this will be just to highlight an area to make it more visible. Uh, you can start a recording. Okay, so that will be like another effect, which is kind of similar to blur. Um, so but typically you want to use one of the other depending on your preferences. Uh, since this is a tutorial video, so you can also choose to add uh, music in the background and we can just simply go to the library to add any music. You can choose to add something from the Camtasia library. Here's the folder for the music track. And so let's uh, take a listen to some of them. If you like any of them, so you can choose to add them to, uh, to the track, typically add them to a separate track. And so I can choose to put this at the very beginning to match the clip uh, and then trim the very end. Let's bring this music down a little bit and to see how it sounds. The microphone. And then you can choose to click the microphone. Okay. Let me just drag it down just a little bit. You can also choose to apply like effects, like a fade in and fade out, fade in at the very beginning and fade out at the very end. Okay, so let's stop this recording. That sounds pretty good. So those are some of the functions that you can use to create an instructional tutorial video by using the screencast function. The last thing I want to show is to add some interactive features to an existing video. So one of the things that we can do if we go to interactivities is to add quizzes. To add a quiz, we can simply go to under markers and then toggle it back to quiz. Every time that you see this little plus sign, you can choose to add a quiz over there. Let's go find a spot where we can choose to add a quiz. So let's give it a listen here. Turn on your microphone. Uh, you can choose to uh, click this little icon to record your camera. Okay, so let's do a simple quiz here. So the quiz functions are under properties where you can change the type of the quiz. So it could be multiple choice, fill in the blank, 
short answers and true or false. So let's change, let's do a simple true and false. Let's give a listen again to record your camera. You can use Camtasia add-in to record your camera, true or false. And the correct answer is true. You can also choose to add additional feedback. And so if correct, it will show the correct feedback that you already previously inputted. And if incorrect, and you can also give some feedback for incorrect answers as well. And uh, you can also choose to uh, change the action. If they answer it correctly, they can choose to continue the video. Answer incorrectly, uh, go back to the previous portion to rewatch that portion. So let's toggle this off for now. You can also choose to add hotspots uh, to your video as well. And then that should be under uh, visual effects and uh, interactive hotspots. And so let's add a hotspot to, let's go find a portion of the clip where we can add it. And then you can choose to click the microphone icon to turn on your microphone. Uh, you can choose to uh, click this little icon to record your camera. So I think that, that part was pretty good to uh, click the red recording button to start a recording. So let's remove this spotlight for now. So first we need to create a little box to drop the uh, hotspots on. So let's go to annotations and then go back to shapes. So I'm gonna put a shape here and put this on my recording button. Uh, for the actual box, make sure that it is uh, transparent. Otherwise, it will be pretty obvious where the hotspot is located to click. Let's go back to the visual effects and then drag this on top of here. This will play at the end of this little clip. So let's change it to the duration just to less than a second chord button. Okay, and uh, let's provide some instructions on the screen. Uh, let's go back to annotations and then add some instructions. Click the record button to continue. Uh, let's change this to the opacity to be all the way to zero and uh, change the color as well so that it is more visible. And uh, let's add another shape behind the text. so that everyone can see. Uh, if you are having trouble with uh, selecting the correct one, so you can choose to use the disable track function. And now that part is disabled, so I can easily change this over here. Re-enable that. Okay, and uh, I can change the duration of this one as well to match the hotspot. Now let's preview the media record button. So that might be a little too quick, but it should work just fine because the video is going to pause right at this second. So once we are happy with the recording, so let's export it uh, as a local file because there are specific interactions that we added in this video since we added a quiz and a hotspot. So we need to go down here. Typically we can just simply choose the MP4, but we actually in this case uh, choose MP4 with a smart player and choose next. And then we need to make sure that we are reporting quiz using the Scorum if you are interested in uploading this video to uh, a Canvas course, and uh, I can toggle this on. And I can toggle this off. 
Uh, and then under Scorum functions, we can choose to change the version 1.2 should work, but uh, I'm gonna change to the newest version just to be sure. I can give a name, Camtasia, add in tutorial, click OK. Then click next, choose where you want to save it. Give it the project production name to Camtasia, add in tutorial and finish. That will take some time depending on how big your project so is. So make sure to how budget your time while recording is. Okay, now the recording is finished. Let's uh, go to Canvas and upload that media. As we see that I have a sandbox course already created. I can choose go to Scrum and upload the Scrum file. If you don't have Scrum toggle down, you can choose to go to settings and then under navigations, the Scrum option might be hidden from the students. So you can choose to uh, drag it on top of over here to make it visible. So let's go to Scorum and uh, upload the file that we just created. So I'm gonna go to downloads and uh, choose the file. So which is going to be a zip file. We can choose to change the import type to be a grade assignment and click go. Uh, once it's finished, then we can click this little icon to open the assignment to uh, customize it. So under assignments settings. So I can choose to add a description here. So this is the Camtasia uh, and then tutorial, uh, give it a description for the assignment and then display the grade can be points or percentage. So I can change this to a 10 point assignment. The very bottom, make sure to click save and publish. If only save is not published yet. So if I click save and publish and enter student view, under assignment, we should be able to see that assignment as one of the assignments that I will need to do as a student. Let's play this uh, video. Little see box, uh, so which can, all the interactions uh, should be appear at the, as little dots over here. And so if we, go over all the way over here Your and phone. then click the, uh, you can choose to uh, click this little icon to record uh, take the quiz uh, you can use it to record your camera yes Continue. camera uh, you can start the recording by hitting the red record button now give us the instructions to click the record button to continue and we know that there's the hotspot here now the students receive the instructions that they need to click the record button to continue this video. So they will need to click here and then the video will resume uh, that way. Okay, so let's stop. Let's uh, go back. And uh, one other thing to note is that there is the complete video later option, which allows you to resume the video next time when you come in and replay it. Uh, if we go to the grades, we see that there is no score, even though we answer the quiz questions. And that is because that the students, they will need to actually watch the video from start to finish. So if they watch the whole tutorial video and then at the very, and then at, the very and then at the very top here, it should say uh, complete the video. They will actually need to click that button for Canvas to register their grades. So that's just something to keep in mind. So there are definitely limitations uh, with using the SCORM function. That is all I have. If you have any questions about this video, about Camtasia, the program, or about this website, feel free to contact me. My email address is listed here. And uh, yeah, thank you all.